In this video, we'll talk about phase portraits for repeated eigenvalue problems. So for drawing phase portraits, the ones for repeated eigenvalues sort of fall in between what we had for real and distinct roots and what we had for complex eigenvalues, which also kind of makes sense. If you think about the quadratic formula, repeated roots is when the discriminant equals zero, real is when it's positive, complex is when it's negative. So they sort of as just solutions also sort of fall on that borderline between real and complex solutions. And the pictures show that as well. The setup here is we only have one real and solution. So we have one, but we don't have two to sort of fill in the entire thing for us. We only have one. The way we use to fill out the diagram is the same thing we used for complex, where we're going to draw the straight line one. That's easy. And then we're going to also figure out what the non-straight line one, the second solution there is doing, and use that to tell us what the picture is going to look like. Let's take our previous example and see what that will look like. So for the last example, here's what we had for general solution. And for the sake of making this clear, I'm going to make this part orange. So I can draw the green solution orange separately, and they'll match up as they should. So we can draw our axes and try to do this just like normal. So if I draw my axes in here, we can draw the C1 solution pretty easily. It is a straight line through the origin at slope 1 half, and the arrows go away. Easy enough. Now, to draw the orange solution, the non-straight line, we've got to be a little more clever. And the way we can be more clever in a simpler way is by first combining the solution to a single vector so it looks nicer. And I'm going to write this now as e to the 2t times 2t plus 0 and t minus 1 fourth. So basically just regroup the terms and pull the e to the 2 to the front. The idea behind this is the e to the 2t just tells me I'm going away and I'm running to infinity. This other bit's going to tell me which quadrant I'm in as I do so, and that's going to help me sketch out this curve. So at t equals 0, this curve starts at 0 and minus 1 fourth. So 0 minus 1 fourth is somewhere around here, and that's where this orange curve is at t equals 0. Now as t gets bigger from 0, what happens? Well, I know I'm going away. I'm running away to infinity. That's what's happening here as t gets bigger. But for t very close to 0, t less than a quarter, the second component will still be negative, while the first one goes positive. So I will be in the positive for the x component and the negative for the y means I'm going to quadrant 4 until t hits a quarter. When t hits a quarter, this goes to 0, this goes to 1 half, and this goes to e to the 1 half. So that's going to be somewhere around here. So I'm going to hit when t equals 1 quarter because then I'll go to 0, and I'm in the positive x direction. And as t gets even bigger, this is now going to be positive, positive. I'm going to be in first quadrant forever. So what does that mean? Well, it means I'm going to be somewhere in this quadrant. Now, I know that I can't cross the green line. That's one point. Second point is that I know that I have to go to zero going backwards in time along this green line. And I have to go to infinity going forwards in time along this line. Although the convergence to this line is going to be a lot slower because it's only linear, not exponential. But the point still stands, I'm going to infinity along the green line and zero along the same green line, but in the opposite direction. And the fact that I know that I'm going to be in quadrant run as t gets bigger means that I should go to infinity in the first quadrant. Then I'm going to do something like this to loop out here and come back around. And I have to follow the arrow backwards to zero, so it's going to involve turning somewhere and coming in like this. You could then fill in other graphs in a similar way. Something that starts up here is going to have to come in this way and go out this way, something like this. So from the picture, it almost sits in between a node and a spiral. The graph sort of wants to spiral around the center here, but it can't because the green line gets in the way, and you can't cross the green line because that's a solution. So you sort of almost spiral, but you don't. It's not really a node either. So this type of graph goes under the name of an improper node. And for this in particular, because it, everything's flowing away from zero, it's an improper nodal source. And we got this because the sign of the eigenvalue was positive. 
you can imagine the exact same graph going in reverse, getting an improper nodal sync if the eigenvalue is negative. Now the last thing to note here is again, you can have these that spiral in the two different ways, either spiraling clockwise or counterclockwise. So you will have to plot one solution to check which direction things move. Right? It is possible to have an improper node that goes this way, as well as one that goes this way. And the only way you know which is which is by looking at the non-straight line solution and figuring out which quadrant is going to be in over time. That will tell you which direction you're going towards infinity or towards zero based on the quadrant of the solution. Just to verify that fact for our solution above, if I look at this guy here and I take t negative, t negative is going to be in quadrant three because they're both going to be negative the entire time. Hence, it has to go to zero along the green line on this side because that side's in quadrant three. It's going to go to infinity along the green line in this quadrant that's going to be in quadrant one. So that is what you get for phase portraits for these repeated eigenvalue problems. You get your improper nodal sources and sinks based on if the eigenvalue is positive or negative.